Hey everyone, this is Brandon Snodder with Willowbend Mortgage and uh, coming to you live today for Monday Mortgage Matters. This is the first time we've really done this completely live. Um, we're, we're kind of minus the two biggest stars of this deal, uh, Marilyn and uh, Crystal. So we're just gonna have to be kind of boring today. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna give it a little bit to hop on here and then we're gonna get some people on. Um, we're gonna bring on the man, Doc Compton, who is a nationally recognized consumer credit guy. He is literally the consumer credit expert. Uh, if you don't believe me, just ask Siri or ask Google. Um, it's pretty cool. So um, uh, he, he's the man. And um, so um, once he comes on, we're going to hop him on and uh, bring him on camera. And so um, while he's coming on, just a little bit about Doc. There he is. Um, Doc has nearly, what, 20 years experience in this business? I hate to say it out loud, but it's actually like 23 or 24 at this point. So over 20 years. Uh, you're like me. I tell people what I've done this 15 years. I'm like, I started when I was 12. It's I was going to say yeah. seven, but yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, so he's had over 20 years uh, experience in the credit industry, and um, it's going to bring tons of valuable content to us today. Um, and also, we're going to be talking about a lot of tips today, right, Doc? But um, yeah. We got a free gift too that for, for people that we can talk about in a little bit. So depending on when you're watching this thing, whether you're watching it live right now, um, please interact and share this. Um, I know this is gonna be super valuable for somebody out there, even if it's not for you. Uh, and you got your credit all up in, you're, you're good, right? You're 800 and you're good to go. Um, but somebody may not be, and this is gonna be great content for them to watch. So um, hit that share button, send it out there and some of your friends can watch that as well. So, um, cool. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Doc, who is the man, and uh, let, him, let him roll. And then we'll just kind of field some questions from you guys, post those in the comments, and uh, I'll tag his information below as well in the comments, uh, if you haven't done that already. Um, but, yeah, definitely do that, and then we'll go from there. Right on. Well, uh, first of all, let me, you know, I, it's – hard to say anything worthwhile after you give such a, you know, a grand um, introduction. So I, I certainly appreciate the kind words and all. The, um, the biggest thing, you know, that I, I want people to know first and foremost is the fact that I've been watching you for a long time. We've been connected on Facebook for, I don't know how long, quite a while. And, uh, you know, I, I, I have an eye for talent. Uh, obviously, all I do all day is talk to mortgage and uh, real estate professionals. And you've obviously been somebody that that uh, stood out to me. And I think that's, you know, one of the main reasons that we've actually connected on this, this project we're going to talk about a little bit today. Um, so realistically, a little background on me, you know, as you said, I'm, I'm the consumer credit expert. I didn't just decide that people started calling me that. So I, I took it and ran with it. And um, I'll turn my phone down here. Um, it, it's been a long time. And uh, I, I really enjoy what I do. I'm very passionate about it. I'm very passionate about the people that I work with uh, who do it and do it well. I was actually thinking the other day on Friday, I was going through my, my timeline on Facebook, which people that don't know me, uh, I spend a tremendous amount of time on Facebook. I do a lot of live videos and stuff like this. <laughs> and the, uh, as I was scrolling through the timeline, I noticed how many people you know, that were friends of mine that were people that I've actually helped with their credit, either through the credit repair process or <clears throat> sometimes just tips and tools and techniques and things that I've given them that have made it possible for them to actually make a home purchase. And I, I was very overwhelmed. So I started counting and I got to, I think it was 38 or 39 before I stopped counting, you know, friends of mine on Facebook that I've actually helped, you know, and, and I'm seeing them post pictures of them in their home. And it occurred to me, wow, you know, had it not been for me and a good realtor and a good lender, you know, none of that stuff would be possible. So it, I'm, very, I'm very passionate about what I do. Love it. So um, I, I suppose awesome. if, if we want to just get right into it, 
um, you know, the big reveal, yeah. if you will. Um, I, last December, we're coming up on a year uh, that it's actually been released, wrote a book that was designed for my realtor and mortgage friends called Credit Ready in Five Simple Steps. That's it right there. <clears throat> and Brandon and I spoke over the phone not too long ago, and we, we talked about potentially having him be on the cover of the book with me. So we've actually, uh, this is the consumer version of it, but the co-branded version, we're actually going to have that handsome devil right there, uh, right there on the cover along with his contact information and everything. And <clears throat> he's going to be giving that book out to select people. Now, the, the thing about this book, Credit Ready in Five Simple Steps, everybody, no matter, you know, like you said, if they've got a, a 550 credit score and they're just trying to get to maybe a 620 so they can even get considered for a home, or if they've got an 800 and they want an 820 because they want to brag at the country club, whatever it is, there's something in this book for, for each of those groups. And what I've done is broken down the five things that everybody needs to know and needs to do about their credit in anticipation of a major finance purpose, like a home or a car or recreational vehicle, anything like that. And we wanted to kind of go over the, the five steps. Now, we're not going to tell you the whole deal because that's what the book's for. And I believe you said you were going to, if people wanted to reserve those copies, how are they going to, how do you want them to, to get in touch with you? Yeah. Yeah. And real quick too, I don't know if it's, um, if you guys out there can, can comment or thumbs up something, if you um, are hearing the audio, okay. It's a little bit broken up on my end doc. I don't know if that's Wi-Fi connection or what. There's not a lot we can do about it, but um, when you're talking, it's a little I think bit it's broken just up. Just, but yeah, if you're people out there, just staring you're like, at you. what is it now? I said, I think it's because people are just so consumed with staring at you. Said, but they can't even hear well. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, I don't know if it could be, could be mine, but um, anyway, I want to make sure people can hear you good. At the end of the day, you're the one bringing a lot of the content. Um, but yeah, so if you're out there and you're watching this, um, if you're interested in getting a copy of this book, um, I've reserved several copies on mine, on my dime, man, and I'm willing to, to give it out to you guys who are watching this and, and want to learn this information. So just, private message me uh, here on Facebook or send an email to uh, B Snyder at WBM.com. And, uh, and I'll be sure that we get you a, uh, a book out there. And so you guys can, can catch this. So anyway, man, so yeah, be sure to do that. And like I said, if you're tuning in and watching uh, post comments, we're going to take some questions below too, uh, later, a little later on. So once Doc's kind of gone through some basics here, we'll take some questions just right on the fly about, about stuff that you may have questions dealing with credit in general. So anyway, take it away. Man. Well, obviously, you know, anytime uh, people always talk about the path of, you know, path to home ownership. Um, and, and if you're going to take a trip like that, the very first thing you need is a roadmap. <clears throat> and essentially that's what your credit report is. Now, you know, you know where you are when you see your credit report. More importantly, Brandon's going to be able to tell you where you need to be uh, when you have that thing. And the credit report is kind of step one. And if, you know, if I can say anything about most people that I talk to, 90% of the time, whatever they think their credit situation is, they're probably wrong. If they think they're in great shape, there's usually some things that can be improved. And if they think they're horrible, Nine times out of 10, there might still be some things that need to be improved, but they're, they're probably not near as far away as they think they are. But the only way to actually figure that out and find that out is <clears throat> to get a copy of the credit report. Now, in the book, what we do is we lay out several ways that consumers can get a copy of their credit report, some of them for free, some of them uh, at a, a nominal cost just to um, you know get them. And we explain the differences between what you get on Credit Karma or Credit Sesame or any one of the online vendors like that. True Credit is another one. Um, and then what Brandon is going to pull is an entirely different affair. And people don't understand that. They come in all the time and, you know, you see the commercials. Experian had that one that they were telling people, you know, my credit's a 720 and, you know, Mr. Banker, I get X, Y, and Z. 
Well, in reality, what happens is if you go in and you tell your lender, well, Credit Karma says I have a 720. Well, great, we're going to pull your credit anyway because that 720 is complete garbage. And I hate to throw any company under the bus, but Credit Karma is garbage. Uh, there's a, a dozen reasons why, and I go over some of those in the book. <clears throat> um, it's not that it's bad to have it. It's just that it doesn't give you the full picture for a number of reasons. So, um, so once you've gotten your report, obviously, now you've, you know, you've got the information, but how to interpret it is key. We teach you in the second step how to read and understand what's actually on your credit report. We break down different account types and different pieces of information about each account type that'll explain exactly what parts you need to be most focused on uh, as you're trying to make improvements and as you're trying to get ready for the mortgage process, uh, specifically mortgage, as we're talking uh, with Brandon today. There's so much in a credit report. There's 350, roughly, factors or combinations of factors in the credit scoring algorithms that determine what your score is going to be. And obviously, it's impossible for anybody to know it because they make it so secretive and they're not going to share it with anybody because if they did, then obviously everybody would just game the system and, and learn how to you know, make it look best. I know more than most people and I don't know near enough to really effectively be able to say that you can do that. But um, obviously there's some, the, some things that if you know them, you can definitely improve your standing and that's critical. Uh, but you have to be able to read it and understand it first. Now, the third step is, right. is critical, and it's obviously it's something that's near and dear to my heart. I've been in, in credit repair for a really long time. That's how my whole uh, career in consumer credit actually started was with the credit repair. I started doing it in the early 90s <clears throat> out of necessity for myself. Um, back then, there wasn't credit repair companies on every quarter and, and so on. You couldn't do it online because there was no online yet. Um, it, but at that point... It was uh, attorneys that did it. And when attorneys did it, they charged an arm and a leg for it. And obviously, being the guy fresh out of college with bad credit, I couldn't afford an attorney, so I started studying, started learning, um, and that's how I got into business. Now, credit repair itself, though, uh, we don't talk about credit repair in the book other than to say, yes, that's something you can do. Um, I don't mention my own company, and I won't do it here either. It's easy enough to find if you look me up. But um, what we talk about specifically in this is legitimate errors that you get a, on your credit report, you're a week from closing, and they pull that last credit report to make sure that everything's good to go, and there's a $1,000 medical collection that shows up. And you say, no, no, I don't have any collections. Well, here it is, and it's from this doctor in Coleman, Alabama. Really? Well, here's a receipt and a canceled check showing that I paid that invoice. What do I do? And we break down the steps that consumers can do completely right. on their own, completely at no charge, to rectify those issues. That makes it infinitely easier uh, for, for Brandon to get his job done, or you know, the realtors are happy because the transaction goes smoothly, the title companies are happy, everything goes much more smoothly, and it, it, obviously it's going to raise your scores and prepare you not only for this purchase, but for any other purchase that you might make in the future. Now, fourth step, this one is key. Um, a lot of times people simply don't have enough credit. And <clears throat> we'll tell you some, some very easy, simple, inexpensive ways to build credit and to do so very quickly so that reports within as little as 30 days on your reports, totally legal, totally legitimate, that uh, will boost your scores by giving you the credit that you didn't have before. Uh, a lot of times people don't realize this, you know, the, the, the old catch-22, you gotta have credit to get credit. And I always use the example, if you go back to the time you first wanted to purchase a vehicle and, you know, that you were going to finance, you go in and you say, hey, I want to buy this car, this truck. Okay, well, uh, let's pull your credit and whatever. And they pull it up and you got nothing but maybe student loans on there. Well, immediately they're going to say, what? You need a co-signer. You need somebody with some sort of credit history, you know, to get you, uh, to get you going on the loan. Fastest, easiest way to do that, right here in Chapter 4, the fourth simple step uh, in the book. We also tell you how to manage it effectively and how to get the most out of it right off the bat. And with regard to managing the credit that you have, 
That's the fifth and final step. Obviously, you've gotten your report, you read it, you understand it, you've made sure there are no errors, you've got enough credit to do what you need to do, and then now you've got to manage what you have. And, and I'm sure Brandon will vouch for the fact that every time there's a closing, there's always that 11th hour call where the lender has to say, yeah, you know, you got to pay down this credit card, or you got to do this, or you got to do that. And if we don't, then we can't get your deal done, right? So what we share in that fifth and final step is all of the things that Brandon really doesn't want to have to talk to you about in the 11th hour of your loan process. Um, you'd be prepared for it so that you don't have to deal with that in the 11th hour, and it actually gets done well before so that you're completely and absolutely prepared when the time comes. So in essence, those are the five steps. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to have you as a partner on this. Um, you, I think you're the first person in Alabama, as a matter of fact. I didn't think about that until just now when I, when I said where you're from. But, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you're the first person in Alabama. you got a, you got a monopoly on the market out there now. For now. There you go. I like being an early adopter. <laughs> so. there, there you go. Um, no, just, uh, you know, and I, I put, I'm gonna make sure I, I couldn't quite hear that last part. What'd you say? Oh, I said, if you're not first, you're last. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, so we're, we're glad to, to bring this. So like I said, if you, he, he, if you just tuning in or watching this later, um, there is a, a book that he's written called credit ready, right? and uh, five easy steps or something like that. Um, but it's got great, simple, easy stuff and we're giving it away. So it's not costing you a dime. So I only have a few, I don't have like a warehouse full of these things. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely if you're interested, send me a private message or send an email to bsnyder at wbm.com. And, uh, and I'll try to see if I can make this work real quick. Oh, this is weird. Let's see. Type in during a live video. Because it never works like it's supposed to. I'll put it here in the comments um, so you guys can, can shoot me a quick email and uh, and get that request in. So like, if you're interested, send me an email. Shoot me a private message here on Facebook. Get that out of the way. Um, and, I'll, and I'll get you a copy. Like I said, I don't have enough for everybody in the world, but Ooh. the first uh, first few are going to be lucky to get this for nothing. So, um, almost there. Like single. I'm doing the same thing. Boom. I'm typing all the links in here. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, man. So, um, for those of you out there to watch, and if you've got credit questions that affected that affecting you right now or somebody you know, um, leave them in the comments below, and we'll try to answer as many of those as we can. We obviously can't stay on here forever, but um, definitely want to bring you guys some valuable content and get your questions answered. That that maybe you have some specific uh, situations that you've had come up on yourself. Um, or realtors out there that may be watching this, if you've got questions, um, myself and Doc, I'm sure we'll be monitoring some of these comments after the fact too. So post sure. your comments, and we'll try to answer as many as we can, you know, with the with the information that we're given, right? So, like I said, I've been doing this for 15 years, man, and I've, we've always had an approach here at um, at Willow Bend, or just when I've been doing loans, I've never just took that uh, that application and said. No, sorry, you got a 550. I can't help you. Like I've always took the approach of trying to tell them what I have learned over the, the course of my career and try to help them get that score better, right, based on the information that I do know um, and try to write that prescription as best as I can for them. And, uh, and a lot of times they'll do that, and a lot of times they won't, but that's, that's all up to the person, right? So, um, But like I said, if you've got questions, post them in the comments. I want to make sure I hadn't missed any and um, roll through here. Hey, Stephanie, if you're still on. Hey, Teresa, say hello to y'all. Tommy, uh, I said touch on proof of income for people paying cash. That's a little different deal. Um, obviously, for a mortgage, it's almost impossible. <laughs> um, and I, we won't get into a lot of that kind of stuff on here, but, um, but well, you know, question, Tommy. 
Here, here's what I would say about that, Brandon. I mean, it kind of lends itself to what I was talking about in the fourth step, the, the fact that people don't have credit. Um, you know, there are the people who have ascribed to the Dave Ramsey school of thought, you know, where you do, what are they, plastic surgery, you know, where they cut up the cards and all that kind of stuff. And, and that's great until you have to buy something that's financed. You have to use your credit. And if you don't have any credit, then you're going to have a really, really difficult time getting financed on any kind of major purchase, like a car or uh, obviously a home. And, you know, if you can just use this one very simple thing that's in the book in, in the fourth step, it will make a huge difference on how difficult or how easy it is. And the best part is you have absolute control over how it works once you get it right. set up. So it, it, it's an awesome, awesome uh, way to get going. So... Awesome. Uh, I saw another question. Well, Lori, I, if I could, um, how could someone get off of an obligation as a co-signer? I'm actually, I've got another book that I'm writing. It's, it's a different one. Um, and, and I talk a lot about co-signers. And the problem with co-signing, you are just as on the hook as is the other person. And I've seen more people with brilliant credit who really had the best interests of the person they were trying to help by co-signing at heart, have their credit be completely tanked because they helped them, they co-signed on them with a, a car or, I mean, a credit card, whatever. Sure. And that, that person, maybe it's a kid, maybe it's a, you know, that brother-in-law, the cousin Eddie brother-in-law, and they don't pay the bill. Well, unfortunately, that reflects on the co-signer just like it does the original loan holder, and it's a nightmare. There's a lot of stuff that it takes a lot of work to fix it, and sometimes you can't fix it uh, because, you know, what we do on the credit repair side, uh, the law says that we can correct outdated, erroneous, inaccurate, incomplete information. If it's 100% correct, there's literally nothing that you or me or anybody else can do to get rid of it. So, you know, the, the, the sage advice that I can offer anybody about co-signing is, as a rule, don't do it. And it's just not a good idea. Now, that's different than um, authorized yes. user. Yes. Um, authorized user, and we see this a lot on credit cards, authorized user accounts is where, you know, I am the card holder, and I'm going to let my kid who's off to college be an authorized user on the card. The authorized user does not have a legal responsibility to repay the debt, and as such, no negative information can be reported on an authorized user. So at that point, those are, I mean, that's an immediate fix. You can get rid of it very, very quickly. Uh, usually they'll delete the account, though, and that can be problematic if that person did the authorized user, perhaps to increase the amount of credit that they have. So you got to be kind of careful with that. That's why it's important to have expert help, either from, you know, your mortgage lender brand or somebody like myself. Yeah, so <clears throat> just to recap some of that. So a <laughs> co-signer, a true co-signing liability obligation is, is one where you're signing your name to the note, agreeing to pay it back just like the other person. Um, so that, that lender has the, the duty to try to collect that debt from either one of you, right? So... Um, an authorized user, like you said, just on a credit card is just some way you see, I'm giving you permission to use my credit card and you're not obligated to pay it back. I am, but you can get that removed pretty easily. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. So let me ask you this. Um, let's say you have a situation where somebody goes through a, a legal divorce. We see this all the time, right? And, I knew this was coming. Uh, they split the debts, right? Right. Uh, so they split the debts. So they award this debt to that one. Is, is there anything they can do to really correct it credit wise other than trying to refinance it or pay it off or restructure the debt completely? What's the best way? Essentially, the only thing you can do is have it refinanced. Um, the other book that, that I'm writing, I also talk specifically about that particular thing uh, and how it could be you know, somewhat cataclysmic for either or both parties. It's very important in a divorce. You know, I, people say that buying a home is the biggest financial decision you'll ever make. And I argue that it's a divorce because the ramifications of a divorce can be significant. Um, because the contract 
on the loan, whether it's a mortgage loan or a car loan or a credit card or whatever, predates the divorce. That's what matters, okay? Now, there okay. are certain protections. For example, if uh, a particular credit card and its balances are awarded to one party, and then that party doesn't pay the bill, doesn't do whatever, well, if the other party hasn't been removed, the negative information will still report on this party unless the other party completely removes them, which typically you can't do. Usually you have to open a new account separate from the other right. person. Um, but if the joint, you know, once it's gone into collect or, you know, once it hasn't been paid in six months and it goes into collections, the collection agency at that point if the decree stipulates that the debt and all of that is the other person's responsibility, the collection agency cannot collect on the other party. So there is some benefit to it, but the reality of it is the lesson in it is you just got to separate everything, shut everything down and start from scratch. That's the best way I've always told people, you know, refinance the car, close your account, open a new one, transfer the balance, whatever you got to do. That Refinance makes it a lot the lot mortgage. Cleaner from a credit perspective. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so uh, I had another question. If we don't have any other questions yet. So you know, if you got questions, post them in the comments, and, and we'll answer those best we can. Um, so you kind of touched on this earlier, and I have my own theories and opinions on this, I'm sure, as, as you do. So what is – Somebody asked me, what's the best way to monitor my credit or what's the best way to check my score, right? Right. What would you say? Anybody well, going to credit monitoring is a great idea for, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> for anybody. Sorry, my asthma and my allergies are killing me today, so please forgive me. That's why I keep having my little Marco Rubio moments here. The... Um, Monitoring is a great idea for anybody, but it's particularly <laughs> important for anybody that's anticipating a major purchase um, because you're going to see a trend. Even if the scores aren't exactly what Brandon's going to pull for you, you're going to see a trend. And if you make some changes, you know, you follow the steps in the book and you start to see this upward trend, even though the score may not be exactly right, the trend is going to match. So let's say on your monitoring, right. you have a 720. In reality, you're probably somewhere around a high 600s, you know, 680, 690, something like that. Uh, we talk about why there's a difference in those scores in the book, too, uh, in that first step. But you're going to want to watch that trend and make sure that it's an upward trend. And if you know that it's an upward trend, then obviously it's going to be the same way with, with branded scores. So if by the same token, all of a sudden, let's say on your credit monitoring, you have a 680, and then the next time you see it, it's at a 605. Well, something obviously has happened very poorly. That would be reflected in what Brandon's going to pull as well. So you need to address that as quickly as possible. That's why monitoring is critical. Uh, a really good example, a lot of people don't realize that when you apply for a mortgage or apply for a credit card or an auto loan, whatever, um, you submit an application, generally speaking, hopefully, with accurate information about your address and your phone number and your employment, all of that information is now shared with the bureaus as a part of that credit application. Now, the bureaus will actually send this information out to their subscribers, which is the collection agencies and the creditors and so on, and go, hey, you know, John Smith over here is trying to get a mortgage with uh, Brandon Snyder, and um, here's all of his new contact info, here's his new address, and, you know, where he works, you can call him and bug him there, you know, whatever. Um, and that's why a lot of times through that mortgage process, right before the deal's ready to close, a collection hits the credit report, tanks the score 50 points, and you're forced to either pay the collection to satisfy an underwriter somewhere, or, you know, try to get it off of your credit or, or so on. And the problem with that is the process can be 30, 45, 60, even 90 days sometimes. Thus, you lose the house you've fallen in love with and been ready to move into. And, of course, Brandon, you know, doesn't get to do your loan. So critical to have yeah, that Yeah, that's those worst case scenarios. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those are, those are bad. Um, and, yeah, knock on wood, we don't have a lot of those issues. You know, we try to do a lot of good um, – coaching up front, you know, when somebody applies for a mortgage, here's what to do, here's what not to do. Um, 
not just so much with their credit, but with all of their finances, you know, it's like, pretend like I'm your boss for, <laughs> for the next 30 to 45 days or whatever that yeah. is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we do that. And, uh, and yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Anybody else got any other questions? Um, I'm trying to think of other questions that I've, that I've had. I, I wrote down a few and, um, you know, we talked about monitoring credit and the difference in scores. Like I get on these rants all the time about um, the difference in FICO scores that somebody were to get on Credit Karma or all these free sites and, and what we pull. And, you know, I'll get on these little soapboxes and have to go on this uh, big education thing of, well, you know, you've got like 28 versions of your FICO score or whatever. You know, I don't know how many they are. There's a bunch. Um, but, you know, like we as mortgage lenders pull one version and you can go down and try to apply for an auto loan and get a completely different score, right? Because they pull a different version. Am I right? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's actually uh, about 60. I forget the exact number because they're constantly creating new ones. They come out with a new one every year. Sure. Um, they basically do that so that they can sell consumers copies of their credit reports. Uh, that's really all it is. It's right. marketing tool. Uh, because most lenders have been using the same model or version of the credit scoring formula for you know a while. They don't change that very frequently. Uh, but you can go from one lender to a different lender, and that different lender may pull an entirely different version. Uh, but once a lending company or once a lender typically has one they like, they generally stick with it. It's a big deal to change it. Uh, so they don't try, they try not to do that. But um, yeah, not the mortgage said, industry. Yeah, there's about 60 different formulas. And the reason there are, you know, and again, we talk about this in the book, uh, it depends on who you're pulling credit for. Uh, they want to see a particular type of report, and there's a lot of variances in those reports and, and so on. Yeah, so like uh, some of the scores or the versions are, are geared to more short-term debt. Some are geared toward revolving debt or credit cards, and some are geared toward somebody's uh, propensity to pay a 30-year mortgage, right? So they're kind of, I think they're kind of geared toward different things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Um, Let's see if I got any other questions. If you got questions, man, we got a, got a couple minutes here. We'll take some questions. On, I want to thank um, while we're given a few minutes to do that. So if you're on live, you got questions, post them right now. If you're watching this later, post them in the comments. We'll still try to interact. A um, couple quick final thoughts. Uh, if you would like a copy of Doc's book, Credit Ready in Five Easy Steps, private message me or send me an email in the the email is listed in the comments here. Send me an email or a private message me. Let me know you want it, and I'll get with you and get your information and get that out to you so you guys can have a copy of it. Um, but, yeah, so uh, a couple more minutes to ask questions if you got it. Do that. Share the video if you're watching right now. Throw it out there. Um, and, uh, yeah, Doc, you got any, any final thoughts on, on your stuff? Yeah. Well, a couple of things. I'm actually typing a link. You know, we talked about the monitoring and so on. I'm actually typing a link in here um, even as we speak. Okay. Um, so that people can go there and check it out. It's a great source for credit reports, scores, monitoring. Uh, there's also some ways on there for people to establish credit and so on. Um, in terms of final thoughts, you know, you said something critical a minute ago, and that was, you know, you were talking about the, the, the preemptive coaching that you do for people. I cannot stress enough you know, it's, it's about setting expectations and, and there's expectations on both ends. You know, as, as a lender, he's got to expect you to provide copies of all the documents. He expects you not to go out and change jobs in the middle of the process. He expects you not to go out to cons or Nebraska Furniture Mart two weeks before you're supposed to close and open a $5,000 account and buy a bunch of stuff for a house you don't own yet. Uh, I can't stress that one enough. Um, but if you don't have a lender that does that preemptive stuff that coaches you through the process, you need a better lender. You know, fortunately, I know that the people that are watching this and the people that uh, the realtor partners that you have that might watch this down the road are going to know, you know, that's, that's paramount to anybody's success in this process. Obviously, you know, he's Brandon is invested in this because, you know, that's how he makes his living, but he's also very invested in this because he wants people to, you know, have the joy, the dream, how cliche it may sound, uh, of home ownership. And if you just do what the experts tell you, whether it's on the credit side or the mortgage side, 
you, you're going to get there. Uh, it may be a process. You know, you may have had some issues in the past that have kept you out of a mortgage loan, but if you've got a lender that has the tools and the resources and the, you know, the, the referral partners maybe to help you, then you're in good hands. If you're with somebody who doesn't, then, you know, it might be time to consider making a switch. So that's my little plug for you. There you go. Yeah, appreciate that. Awesome. Yeah, we work with tons of great realtor partners and, and uh, help hundreds of families each year get in their homes. And, and um, not all of them are easy, you know, and not all of them come to us with 740 credit FICO scores, you know. So um, we work with all of them wherever, wherever they are and, uh, and try to help them get to that next level. I was having this discussion at, at lunch with a realtor and um, it's even the, the little things uh, of knowing and being experienced enough to know, to tell somebody, let's say they're coming here with a, um, a 658 or 654 FICO score, but we can get them to 660 and get them a lot better interest rate. And we can tell them one or two quick things to do to help them. We try to do that, you know, even throughout the process. So, um, it's not just, just to get you credit score high enough to qualify. It's to get you the best absolute mortgage that you can get far enough. There, so, yeah, there's, uh, anyway, there's, we one, tip. there's one tip in the, the final step, in, in the, the fifth step, that I don't care how good your credit is, if you follow that step, it'll improve your credit. And I've, I've lectured around it or lectured about it all around the country. I've done videos, I've written articles, uh, you know, books, contributed to more interviews and things that I could possibly even begin to recall. And that one tip is probably the most important thing I've ever seen um, that a consumer can do on their own to improve their credit score. And I mean, that in and of itself is worth the effort to reach out to Brandon and get a copy of the book and um, read through it. The book is, I mean, it's an easy read take a couple of hours um, and I promise you it'll save you tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Awesome. Well, doc, man, um, looks like we're, we're good on questions. And like I said, if you're watching this later, post your questions, uh, myself and doc will, will monitor those and try to help you out as much as we can. And if you want to copy of the book, private message me or send me an email. It's listed in the comments. And we will get you guys hooked up for the free copy of this book. So, um, man, if you got any uh, anything else, otherwise we'll 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 shut her down. We'll just make them, we'll make them get the book. Awesome. Well, Doc, thank you so much again for for joining us, and I hope you guys found this helpful. And uh, if you're watching this, share it and get the contact tag somebody that might need to know that in the comments, and and hopefully we'll be able to have Doc back on sometime later and uh, appreciate you joining us, man. You bet, man. Thanks so much, guys. All right. See